Good morning, everyone. Hi, hello. My name is EJ, and I am here again with another narrated art time lapse video for us to enjoy watching and maybe hopefully learn a thing or two. So, yeah. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at my entry for this little mini competition in this art group that I'm in. Um, this art group I'm in is Ramen's Sketch Zone. Uh, just for clarification, there's quite a few sketch zone <laughs> groups out there um just to let you know we're not affiliated however with the uh, youtube uh podcast team uh which is fairly popular um we're a totally different <laughs> group so we're a discord channel group that just hangs out and you know help each other improve with our artwork and whatnot and part of the way we improve our artwork is we do this little mini competitions uh, one of them is the monthly art challenge um, which is what this illustration is for um, so yeah um, but to talk to quickly or I'm gonna skip talking about the competition real quick and just concentrate on like the art process because I don't want to miss this part that we're watching right now. So um, there's quite a few things that I could talk about uh, concerning a competition, but I think the art process that's playing out right now is a wee bit more important to be talked about. So what we're taking a look at in front of our screen right now is me sketching uh, the Kapishwar temple. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. It's a temple in India, uh, and it's circular in nature. Uh, I don't know how big the temple is. I don't know if this uh, structure in itself is the temple or if there's um, a bigger aspect of it. And this structure that we're taking a look at is just one simple aspect of, of the temple. I mean, I'm not sure because I've never been there before, so I don't really know. Um but one thing for sure though is um the photo that i'm referencing from is basically the same photo that you'd find in wikipedia unfortunately though i'm not sure if this is the wikipedia picture uh that i'm referencing so that's why the photo is blurred out um but there is a really good photo from wikipedia um uh, that uh, showcases this circular uh, temple of sort and basically that's what I'm doing is just sketching the details out while basically doing a photo study um, so yeah what you saw just happened just now was I start to sketch out uh, the temple right and then I totally forgot that Krita has a symmetry uh, future to it which makes sketching this temple so much more fun when i finally remembered that there's this symmetry feature on i was like oh yeah this would make things a little bit easier on me and as you can see i mean the sketching part just went by a lot faster and a lot quicker so basically what ended up happening was you know i did a rough sketch at first and then i realized oh yeah there's the that symmetry feature so what I decided was turn it on kept my rough sketch and started doing my semi detailed sketch on top of that so that's what we're taking a look at right now is me doing a much more finer sketch much more detailed in a way um, so yeah and then after this quick sketch, I'm going to sketch out the characters, which basically the characters are of this captain. Uh, the title of the piece is called Captain of the Undead. Uh, I didn't even get to talk about that. And so it definitely has like that uh, Lord of the Rings feel when um, Virgo Mortensen led a bunch of ghosts um, to war, basically, because the war, the ghosts were like, indebted to uh virgo's royalty line or something to that effect that I, I don't remember exactly what the story is um but yeah in order for the this ghost army to ascend to heaven or nirvana or where, wherever they is they have to uh repay their debt by 
fighting one more war for Virgo Mortensen's Virgo Mortensen's uh, Lion King. What is that character's name? You know, just to be correct, I'm just gonna look that up real quick because I am totally forgetting who the characters are. Uh, let's take a look real quick. Where are you? Okay, Virgo Mortensen's uh, character in Lord of the Rings. It's Aragorn. Okay, so Aragorn led army of the dead. Yeah, it's such a great scene. Anyways, uh, so yeah, <laughs> there's the Lord of the Kings reference right there, Aragorn and the Army of the Dead. Anyways, so the theme for this mini competition that um, I'm participating in is Captain of the Undead. And so basically, I took inspiration from that particular scene in Lord of the Rings trilogy and basically kind of based my entry on that. Um, so I have the this captain which i'm sketching out right now and he's basically raised this ghost army to help him fight whatever war that he's about to go on or whatever battle he's about to go on so yeah um not entirely a, a novel concept of sort but you know it kind of totally fulfills uh the requirements of the prompt in a way because captain of the undead and well you know, or Captain of the Dead or something. I don't even remember what the prompt was for this competition because this was a while back. See, this was way back in 2020, so last year. So since it was a while back, I'm, I'm not completely remembering what that prompt was. But I do believe it's like Captain of the Undead or Captain of the Dead. So it basically kind of denotes um, a leader of some sort of zombie army slash ghost army in which... In this case, I decided for the ghost army, so yeah. But anyways, going back to the process, now I'm almost done sketching the characters. And then what I'm eventually going to end up doing is I'm going to lay down my colors. And I lay down my colors pretty quick. I use a limited color palette that I get from... Uh, I got a bunch of palettes from Color Palette Cinema, you know. And I like starting out with a limited color palette because I'm not very good with colors. And if I have too many colors, then my brain just goes sporadically everywhere. So it's always better to just start out with a limited set to just kind of harmonize the whole photo. So in this particular case, the color palette I use is all predominantly blues with a red key color. And it's amazing, personally. I think it really works effectively in this particular illustration where everything else has this bluish hue of some sort and then we have this one red key element which is the captain so it kind of just draws attention to him just because he's red and everything else is blue so but yeah so i chose this limited color palette and then i'm laying down my colors with the use of um, and hey, hey, there's a photo bash part. <laughs> there is a photo bash uh, part in here because I kind of wanted to, I guess, add a little more variety in the colors. Since I knew that the temple was going to be predominantly blue, I didn't want the ghost to um, be completely blue in a way. So I'm adding this tinge of green on here from an old artwork of mine. That's Power Kid, uh, an old artwork that I have that I'm photo bashing into this particular illustration. Anyway, so as soon as I have um, all my colors down, um, I'm basically gonna smudge all my colors just so that I could get this base paint for these characters. And I'm totally separating the characters from 
the background because I wanted to work on them separately since I knew that I was going to do this transparency effect on the ghost and I, I needed for them to be separate. My big tendency is to work with one layer. I love working with one layer so I pretty much paint everything on one layer but in some cases obviously I have to separate layers especially if I'm doing some form of special effect, in which case the special effect I'm going for is the transparency, which I needed to preserve that. And that's the reason why I separated the characters from the environment. So anyways, I'm smudging all the characters just so that I could get this base paint, this base layer that I, I do my detailing on. And that's for the characters. And then I'm eventually going to do the same thing for, um, the background where I kind of smudge everything in the background and have this base layer and then I'll end up just doing my details on top of it so that's pretty much what we're gonna be seeing um, in the next few minutes so yeah let's just enjoy the show for now and then I'll come back in a little bit to talk some more about the prompt and whatnot so yeah
Okay, so at this point in time, I have started my detailing process and basically my detailing process is like a three-step process that I continuously do over parts of my illustration. And that three-step is basically delineating my edges, which is really important. I make my edges sharper so that my shapes are more readable. I also accentuate the shadows, which means, you know, if the shadows need a little bit darkening, then I darken it a little bit more. And then I add highlights. So basically I do this throughout parts of the painting. Um, and I do this real fast because I really meant for this particular illustration to be a speed paint. So, you know, I go through this fairly quickly um, in a longer format work where I do a longer illustration, say like a 30 plus hour illustration. I really carefully do this. Um, I don't do this quite as fast. So yeah, um, but yeah, this is what I'm going to be doing for basically like the next 10 minutes. You'll just see me like slowly detail out um, this temple. I also did a lot of color corrections as well as value corrections. Right now I'm painting the ceiling on the temple. Um, and by the way, before I forget, the... The, what I ended up doing and what I ended up illustrating is heavily based off the Kopeshwar temple, but it is not exactly like the Kopeshwar temple. Like there's no ceiling in that in this circular temple of some sort. Um, and obviously mine has a ceiling um, because obviously I wanted to modify it a little bit to kind of fit uh, the needs of the illustration. But going back to what I was saying about the ceiling, like this particular uh, part that I'm working on right now is the ceiling and I realized that I ended up making it a little too bright than it needed to be I didn't want it to compete with the bottom area Obviously because the bottom area is where all the light source and all the brightness needs to be because it obviously I obviously need to draw attention to the characters and uh, so when I first started detailing this it was too bright and I had to turn it down So you'll see a lot of color corrections and value corrections all throughout this particular illustration so yeah but going back to talking about the prompt and whatnot so I'm part of Ramin's sketch zone group it's a discord channel and again like I mentioned earlier we do competitions mini competitions and whatnot and so one of the mini competitions is the monthly art challenge and I feel really bad for this particular entry actually I feel really bad for a lot of my entries and I'll quickly explain why. Um, the idea behind the monthly art challenge is that it's supposed to let an artist practice longer format works, you know, works where you spend a lot of time on it. You're not supposed to rush through your entry for the monthly art challenge. Um, the idea for the monthly art challenge is you basically do what the process is if you were to work, say, in a production house or in a studio house. And if you're working, like, say, on a splash image for a video game, or if you're working on, say, a keyframe illustration for a particular movie that is being produced, those kind of artworks need a lot more time rather than a speed paint, which is what this is. This is a speed paint, right? It's like under five hour kind of, uh, under five hour work, basically. So basically, in a real life setting, you know, you do a lot of studies and you do a lot of sketches, preliminary sketches before you actually do your keyframe illustration slash splash image slash full render illustration, right? And so this is what the monthly art challenge is supposed to emulate. You're supposed to do all this mini studies, mini sketches, and then you do your final entry. <laughs> Well, I never do any of those, <laughs> so yeah, and I feel really bad. And the reason why I don't do any of those is because, A, I'm not really set out to win the challenge or anything. Like, it's not really in my brain or mind or anything. More than anything else, the reason why I don't practice the long format works is because I already have a long format work that I'm already working on at any given time. You know, and I didn't want to take away time from that. So, for example, this was done in 2020. And I'm trying to remember what the last two was. I think the last two that I did was Mama's Ice Cream slash 
um, ang dalaga. No, no, no. I think I did tinikling and then ang dalaga. So, those were long format works. I spent like 30 hours on it, on those. And I was already working on those two particular illustrations when this particular mini competition started. And so I couldn't really afford to take time away from those two illustrations to do um, a fully detailed full render illustration for this competition. And so that's the reason why I just ended up speed painting an entry. And technically, I didn't even mean to enter the competition. You know, I, what ended up happening was I ended up running into this image of the Kobishbar Temple. And I thought it was like a very interesting photo. And so that's how I ended up getting seduced into entering the competition in the first place, because I hardly ever do. Um, I, I know time wise, I just couldn't afford the time to spend on a month long competition since I already got my own art projects that I wanted to concern myself with, you know? So yeah, I kind of feel bad about that, but then at the same time, it's really no harm, no foul. I mean, the it's not like I get punished for it or anything, you know? I mean, our group is very, very level-headed and very relaxed, you know? I mean, if you enter and you did a speed paint entry, that's fine. You know, more than likely you won't win <laughs> just because they're really looking for a really finely detailed, full rendered illustration rather than something like I would turn in where it's all just speed painted entries. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that's a little side story concerning this particular illustration. Um, this illustration is almost dead and man i wish i have a lot more time to talk about this because there's a lot of things to really talk about this especially the symmetry feature of krita i was like really super impressed with it um and well i guess i might as well mention this now um in real life symmetry isn't actually very perfect so when I did the symmetry detailing on this particular illustration, I made sure that there were some aspects of it that was non-symmetrical because I couldn't afford for it to be symmetrical completely because then it would just look too weird. So in this case, when I did my smudging to create my base paint, that was completely non-symmetrical. And then all the detailing pretty much happened on top of a non-symmetrical image. So, you know. Uh, which is really cool, obviously, because it helped enhance, like, the realism of it. Because, you know, in real life, symmetry is very, very, very rare. In fact, the more symmetrical things are, except for man-made stuff. Man-made stuff are completely fine being symmetrical, but I'm talking about nature in general. Nature does not have any kind of full, complete symmetry. So, and actually, even man-made stuff you know, over time ends up becoming non-symmetrical. So you can have like a symmetrical temple like this, for example. And over time, because of the wear and tear that happens on the temple itself, eventually it will become non-symmetrical. So obviously to enhance realism, I had to keep that in mind. So that was one of the things that was in my brain when I was detailing this because I needed to make sure that I preserved that. So yeah. But anyways, uh, going over my own critique of this piece, I really, really, really love the bluish nature of this piece. I really love the whole feel of this piece. Personally, I think I should spend a lot more time developing this because this really has a good potential to be developed into like a keyframe illustration slash splash image. I mean... The whole scene has like a dramatic narrative to it, you know, here's this captain of the dead or captain of the dead and he's like commanding this army and they're all racing from the ground and everything's lit. Uh, the whole scene is lit from this, you know, from the ghosts and whatnot. So yeah, uh, narrative wise, it just has this very dramatic cinematic feel to it. And I think developing this into a fully detailed piece would be very, very, very fun to do. Not only that, but with the symmetrical feature of the of Krita, I think it would be really cool 
to work on this but yeah so yeah this is one of those rare illustrations that was symmetrical in nature that i took advantage of this nice little feature in Krita and i was like so in love with it it totally made my work so easy that i was super impressed with this um feature so yeah and right now i'm adding a little my last layer edit which basically this is supposed to denote uh, brightness I'm adding some form of I think color dodge layer of some sort I, I'm not I'm not really sure what this layer ends up becoming if it's screen or color dodge the whole idea behind this layer is to just brighten where the ghost and the captain are because I really needed for that middle part to be brighter than it needed to be oh that was the transparency okay that's what it is. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from watching it with me. I will see you guys in the next video. Good night. Mm -hmm.